Well, hello, Alan's Bank, and welcome to this quick review of what you did in the coach the other day. Now, when you first came into the coach, you connected up your Raspberry Pi, which you'd, we've covered in the previous video, and there were two different types of screen. First one you saw was the sort of text screen that allowed you to do... Um, all the commands being typed in and what you were asked to do was to first of all you had to log in so you had to enter your name which on all the machines was pi and then when it came up the password was raspberry now remember when the password was typed in it didn't come up on the screen because of that it was a security measure it doesn't want teachers looking over your shoulders to see your password so when it comes up and says password it hides it away which is a security measure and the second one was a graphic screen and your graphics screen looked like this. Now we decided, was it good to have a graphics screen, which is the same thing as you see on your tablet or your mobile phone, or was it better to see the sort of text screen that you had? And you were sort of time suggested that graphic screens are really nice, but when it comes to power, the text screen is, is a lot more powerful. The simple way of getting to the graphics screen is to type the command start X. Start X was the thing that allowed you to jump straight into the graphics screen which gave you this. Now, we can have the best of both worlds because one of the first things we noticed was if you click up here in the, up to this little terminal screen, this little black thing, click on that, you open this, which is a text screen inside the, the graphics environment. Now, we decided we called the graphics environment a GUI. And why was it called a GUI? Well, GUI was short for graphical user interface. And we decided that graphical was pictures, um, like touch sensitive screens and the sort of things we have here which is um, a mouse and a pointer and possibly a touch screen like your mobile phone or your ipad or something like that so graphical is pictures user well you're all users and the interface was the link between you and whatever it was and we said that the link between you and the computer was the keyboard and the mouse and the screen and the link between me and the interface between me and the coach was the steering wheel and all those complicated pedals underneath so everything has an interface so a graphical user interface is what we use on the, on the mobile phone or the raspberry pi here and that's called a gui because we spell g-u-i gui right so having done that what do we do next no idea yes what we decided we wanted to do is look at what the work we were doing and we had the option I said all the things that we were going to learn could be used for good or it could be used for bad. And if we were going to use them for good, then we were hackers. Now, hackers aren't what it says in TV and radio. They always get it wrong. Hackers don't break in. Hackers are good people. They work out how things work and they disassemble things, allow you to get on and play with things. A lot of the stuff we're doing here is done because there's hacking involved and hacking is good. The bad stuff where people go in and get passwords and that sort of thing the evil stuff you could do that as well and the evil stuff is cracking now you can think of this if you just remember um crackers break break into safes by cracking the code to break in so hackers are good crackers are bad and you can decide whether you want to be a hacker or a cracker or not quite decided yet so you're in between anyway let's move on we thought it might be an idea to log into somebody else's machine and shut it down mm. And this has actually turned out to be a little bit easier than we thought because there are lots of things that you can do um, to shut down a machine. And, and this is kind of an example as to why you'd use a text interface uh, on the console rather than the graphical user interface. Now, to shut a Raspberry Pi down, which is the first thing you should really learn after you've learned how to turn it on, you click on Menu and you go down to Shut Down here and you get these options. You get these three options. Shut Down which is a real shutdown, because if you click on that, the machine will shut down and not come on until you turn the power back on again. Reboot, which is actually, oh, a bit like, a bit like rebooting your Windows machine. And that means that you're going to shut down and then restart. And log out, which means you're going to finish being a user as user Pi and you want to change into somebody else's user. But as we only have one user on the Pi at the moment, this doesn't really come into play. So shut down means shut down the machine and stop or halt. And reboot means shut down the machine, but start all over again, loading everything nicely and cleanly. And this is how you do it in a graphical user interface. Okay, now. 
if we want to do this in a text mode, if you really want to do powerful commands, then the simple thing to do is to type sudo. It stands for super user do. So we concatenate it. Uh -huh. S-U-P-E-R, user do. Okay, so rather than type out super user do every time, because it's bad enough having to type sudo, we decided to type sudo. So sudo, that means we're going to do something important. And what are we going to do? Well, the command is shutdown, S-H-U-T-D-O-W-N. Now, I told you Linux is a bit picky. It's the most powerful operating system there is. And it's used on, what, 498 out of the top 500 machines in the world. You get to use this, and you, you get to use the Pi, and you get to use the biggest systems in the world. But it can be a little bit picky, okay? So when we say shutdown, it says, yeah, okay, but what sort of shutdown do you want to do? Well, you could shut down and halt, so it's shut down minus H, which is the equivalent of shut down minus halt. Okay, but we've just concatenated that to minus H. Or you could shut down minus reboot, which is R. So we can do sudo shut down minus R, which will do a reset for us. But it's still a little bit picky. So we want to do a little bit more than this, and we want to say, when do you want to shut down? Well, the answer was. We could say, I don't know, 10 o'clock on Christmas morning, 2021. I don't know. But we decided that now was a good option. And of course, as soon as we hit that, I can't do that on this demonstration because the whole thing goes wrong. But as soon as we hit that, the machine will go down and it would reboot. And then it would come back on and you'd have to log in as user pi password raspberry. Because those were the default settings on every single of the 8 million pies that have been made so far made down in Sonny and Bridge End, just up the road in Sonny and Bridge End. Eight million. Britain's most popular computer is now the Raspberry Pi. Only 30 pounds. <coughs> Tell your mums and dads. Okay, so we've got that. We now know how to shut down a machine. Now, if we want to shut down somebody else's machine, there were just a couple of things we needed to know how to do. The first thing was, we have to be connected to somebody else's machine. And to be connected to somebody else's machine, a computer normally has to be connected to the internet. And we said, well, what sort of things do you need if you're, if you're on a network? And we said, well, if we need to send somebody a letter, it needs to be in, it, in an envelope with a postage stamp, obviously. But on the front of it, the most important thing was the address. If we want to phone somebody up, we can't really phone them up unless we've got their telephone number. So on a letter or a packet, you've got an address. On the telephone, you've got a telephone number. But on the internet, you've got an internet address. Now, the command to see your internet address and make sure you were connected was ifconfig. That could go down the cheat sheet, by the way. Here's the machine I'm on at the moment. And on ifconfig, it gives us the details about our ethernet link, which is this link up here. And we did some concatenation again, concatenating, reducing the word internet address down to inet adur. And you all had an inet adur, which is shown here. Now, I'm not in school anymore, not in your school anymore. And my internet adur here is 192.168.0.11. Notice that's four numbers all separated by three dots. That's what an internet address looks like. In the school, it was 10195 dot, and then depending on which machine you had around the coach, you had a different number. So the thing about this is, and the important thing about this was, everybody's address started off 10195, okay, and that's a bit like a postcode. Everybody in Cardiff has CF as a postcode, and then different areas of Cardiff have got different numbers and then as you get closer and closer to different parts of the street you get more and more numbers around the allen's banking area for example we can actually see cf14 is important because that's the allen's bank area and then different roads and different streets have different addresses so 10.190.5 was your school because when i go to other schools it'll be 10.190.6 or 10.190.7 10.190.8 there are different schools and the last number is you so your ip address is four numbers separated by three dots like this okay now we've got an address we can start to do useful things how do we know that somebody was connected to us or we were connected to somebody else to decide whether we had a connection to another machine, we could type the word ping. That's another command for your cheat sheet. 
So we could say, let's do ping on my system. I'm going to do 192.168.0.1, okay? And press enter, and what do we get? Dum -dum -dum -bum -bum. How do we stop this display? Because it keeps going on and on. What was the key we pressed? We held down the control key and pressed C, and that made this come up like that, so it stopped what we were doing. So what did this command do? Ping 192.168.0.1. Well, it kept putting these lines out, said it sent out some details. And over here was the most important thing, this column here. Look at this. The time it took to ping. So I'm coming out from my machine, which was up here on 192.168.0.11, uh, and I ping this guy on 192.168.0.1. And the time it took was 0 0.760 milliseconds or 0 0.834 milliseconds or 0 0.748 milliseconds, right? Now, we had to ask ourselves, what is a millisecond? It's how many milliseconds in a second? A thousand. This has taken 0.768 of a millisecond. This, this is tiny and it was exactly the same as we were working around um, the, the, the coach we got those sort of figures the signal went out from your Raspberry Pi to the box at the end of the coach out of the box at the end of the coach back to your friend's machine back to your friend's Pi and it took like, like this 0.768 of a millisecond now if I really want to push you I'll actually tell you that that's 760 microseconds that's 760 millionths of a second but that's for another video anyway so we did that and we realized that that is actually quite quick that's actually blooming fast so then we said well how's your school connected on the internet well or how's the coach connected the coach was connected your pie was connected through that orange wire to a box inside the coach and then it went out of the coach on that orange wire that went over the fence and in through the window and into the wire into the sockets on the wall and then it goes into the wiring inside the uh, inside the school down to your secretary secretary's office inside the secretary's office is a box on the wall where all the wires come together and collect it together in the school and then these are then connected to another box which turns the signal into a light signal which goes down an optical fiber so the electrical signals change to an optical signal and it's sent by light pulses down the optical fiber which came out of the school down to the end of the street turned right went up to the heath pub from the heath pub it went down over the traffic lights down cruis road down to the bottom turned right all the way down Richmond Road, all the way down Richmond Road, right to the very end, Newport Road, crosses Newport Road, no problem there, round past the prison, up, turn left, over the flyover like this, down it heads, past the crane on the right-hand side and the steel building on the left-hand side, all the way down to the roundabout on the end, turns right, goes up, and this is the building. For those of you who didn't know what County Hall looked like, this is County Hall. Inside here is our iLearn server. The, the optical signal goes in, it's turned back into an electrical signal inside the computer room, and then the iLearn server is found. The ping goes up to the iLearn server, the iLearn server goes, Ooh, who's this? It knows where you are, it knows who you are, so it pings you back because it knows your address. It sends the information back. Let's do that from here. I'm actually at home at the moment, so it, what do we do? Rather than try and work out what the iLearn server's IP address is, we simply needed to type ping ilearn.cc okay let's go for that here what have we got dum, 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 dum. now the figures here from my my home in cardiff are not as good as they were in um in the school because in the school we got sort of one 1.8 milliseconds here i'm a little bit further away because we've got to go um, a bit further around to get to uh to to cardiff uh we've got 20 milliseconds 20.2 milliseconds now that's 20.2 thousandth of a second We started by saying that we wanted to be able to log into another machine and shut it down. And now we only need one more command to achieve this. We know how to log into a machine. We know how to check if we have an IP address. We know how to check whether we're connected to another machine. All we need to know is how to log into another machine. It's called a remote machine.
Concatenate secure login to make S login and use the details that look a little like an email address. So we could use S login at username at the email address. The email address can be an IP address or a name, as we saw on the coach. Now, to be a good hacker or cracker, you need to think of patterns. On the coach, you knew the names of all the other users. They were all Pi. And you knew all their passwords, Raspberry. And you knew their IP addresses because they were written on the whiteboard. So, logging in was quite simple and the commands were obvious. And the effect was, well, fun. So here I can log in, s login 192.168.0.17. I've logged in, password, it doesn't print back. The Pi can boot into text or graphics mode. The black text screen is often called a console. GUI is the name we give to the graphical user interface. In the text mode, you have to log in with your username and a password. The default username and password on every new Pi is user equals Pi and password equals Raspberry. All in lowercase and note, nothing appears on the screen when you enter the password. In graphics mode, you go directly to the desktop without logging in as user Pi, but you are still user Pi. To start the desktop in a console, we just enter the command StartX. In the desktop, we can open a console window by clicking on the small black console icon. The graphical mode is easier to use, but the text mode is more powerful. So the console on the desktop could be seen as the best of both worlds. When the Pi is switched on, gobbledygook streams up the screen. This is the boot process. During the boot process, the Pi tries to work out where it is. Now, a postal address is no good, and a telephone number is also no good. The Pi needs to know its internet address. An internet address looks like four numbers separated by three dots. Find your own IP address by entering the config command. You can ping another machine by using the ping command. Hold down the control key and tap the C key to stop the ping printing results on the screen. The time it takes for the pulse to travel between the machines is usually shown in milliseconds, thousandth of a second. Ping can be used with an IP address or an IP name. Possibly the most important command on the Pi is shutdown. This may seem silly, but just pulling out the power can cause all of your data to be destroyed. You are using Linux on the Pi. Linux is the most powerful operating system in the world, used on the very biggest machines. So learning to use the Pi means you can learn to use these big machines. You can shut down the Pi in graphics mode by clicking the menu and selecting shutdown. In text mode, you can enter the shutdown command shutdown minus H now. To log in to another remote machine, use a secure login command with that kind of email address. Once you've entered the password correctly, you have control. So, what is the first thing you should do on a new Pi? 